Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we're back over at our duck exhibit! Though really it's not quite an exhibit as much as it's just a corner for our beautiful adorable ducks to hang out under this beautiful willow tree. So maybe I'll call it the duck willow? Mm -hmm. We'll have to think about it, right Ranger Sebastian? Poor Sebastian. He's still pretty stressed out trying to make sure he can count all of our little ducks and make sure that they are okay. <gasps> oh, floating egg! And we'll go get that egg in just a second. But so far our ducks are doing very well well. I haven't gotten any notifications of any of them potentially passing away, so I think everything is going nice and smooth over here. However, I am kind of intrigued by the fact that they all want to hang out over here by the gate, and I think that's because they're kind of like chickens. Not not literally. Ducks are not literally like chickens. Uh, well, you know, they're kind of, they're foul and everything like that, but I think that our duckaroos just are attracted to the gate just like chickens are attracted to gates in Minecraft. So we might change this out some point in the future for something else. I'm not exactly sure what that something else would be because I still want people to be able to walk over here and I still want the ducks to potentially like not escape, but it would be really nice if they didn't crowd around here and they could just enjoy, enjoy this big beautiful area that they have to savor. And in the future, we probably will be making it so that the ducks, okay, don't panic. Don't panic, Emma. You've got this. You can come back out from this. All right, and I've learned that if I mess with the ducks when they're doing that and getting stuck under the lily pads, then that is actually what causes them some trouble. But if I leave them alone, then they're just fine. So see, Emma's fine now. She's figuring it out. Okay, so we're not gonna panic about that. We're just kinda gonna keep an eye on all of our wonderful duckaboos. I'm gonna put these duck eggs into the duck nest. Take good care of them. <gasps> Puppy! Puppy, our original duck. Oh, hi, buddy. I'm sure he'll take good care of his eggs over here. Oh, that's just wonderful. But yeah, all of the other ducks are still doing very well. So I'm pretty relieved that everybody seems to be um, pretty happy. I just need to convince them to spend more of their life away from this gate. So we'll figure that out. But welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the zoo. I actually have gotten a uh, little tweet from my dodo keeper up there from our wonderful Martha the Second. She has let me know that there's some mail I need to go check out over at our mailbox in just a moment. But I thought on our way back from the underwater or the underwater Asian River Exhibit. Jeez, it took me a second to work that out. It's the Asian River Exhibit that is underwater. You can see it from underwater. But coming back from that exhibit where we had all of these brand new catfish. Look at these catfish. Aren't they the coolest things? I love them. But I just came back from checking on them and I thought I would come over here and make sure that these guys were still here and they are and they look awesome and I am so in love with them. And you know what I think we may do pretty soon? We will probably spend a day or two gathering up more fish gathering up more fish from Dr. Nami over there in the Tate and Tackle and putting them free into the big pond like the, that little guy over there because I think you do lose your fish over time and I don't see as many fish as we used to have in here so we need to add in some more fish fish. I wonder, I can't remember if swans eat fish. I betcha I betcha there would be opportunistic eaters. They would eat it if they could. That's my guess at least. Oh and we should get the swans a new sign as well that have their little identification marker to let everybody know how rare swans are if they're protected or not. I am pretty sure that most populations of swan are actually not uncommon, but I do know that they're protected because in England they belong to the queen. So I think that's so interesting. All right, so Lily, Tate, Alia, Let's go ahead. We're going to move upstairs. We are going to go check the mail really quickly, puppies. And then maybe we will go check on the Red Wolf exhibit in just a little bit, too. And I, I, oh, actually, you know what? If we're going to... Mm, mm, I want to check on Dr. Nami, Lily. But we'll come back and we'll check on Dr. Nami another day. Because we are probably going to do a little bit of fishing so that we can trade him uh, those fish. If you fish up with your fishing rod and gather up some fish from any a beautiful water source throughout our entire world and gather up a nice fish fish, then you can take it over to Dr. Nami and his assistant penguin pebbles and trade them for live fish. Oh geez, and there goes Alia and Tate pretending to be a live puppy fish. All right, come on you guys. Ashley, thank you so much for all your help. It really meant a lot to be able to gather up those little catfish and put them in my underwater Asian river exhibit, which is still a bit of a mouthful. So thank you so much for that, Ashley. All right, let's get moving. We're gonna go ahead. Oh, I love this new path. It's so fantastic. I can't wait to continue spreading the path around the entire lake 
That's going to be really awesome. Already connects down here. We've got artwork. We've got statues on display. We've had, got donation boxes. We've got little nice areas with amazing trees that were donated that we can come over. A peak of pine planted by Alexis with Alexis herself right here to trade to, which is so awesome. Puppies, please stay out of the flame. I happened to find a field full of columbine flowers the other day. Would you like some? Well, thank you, Alexis. You do have a few awesome columbine flowers, don't you? We'll come back and trade another day and I'll see if I can... Oh, I have trail mix. That's right. I made a whole bunch of trail mix to share with her. Let's go ahead. I'll gather up a couple. In fact, you know what? You know what? This is kind of on a whim. But let's go ahead and we're going to trade her with a bunch of these columbine flowers just really quickly. A whole bunch. We'll gather up some of those ones and a twig. And you know what? We're going to take these beautiful columbine flowers that you have, Alexis, and I'm going to sprinkle them around for just a second because our zoo is really, really coming along, you guys. I am so proud and so excited. It is looking so good. Like I said, we've got paths. We've got artwork popping up. We've got proper signs that are explaining what type of uh, like animals you're looking at inside of the exhibits for once. Oh, and I hope, I hope, I hope that's what's in the mail today, too. I think we may actually have some proper educational exhibit items. Things like charts to show you different kinds of leaves in the forest or different kind of paw prints and what those animals are that made the paw prints. Those are the things that I requested from Emily Bones over at the museum trade uh, with the new museum trade system that's in place, which is so much fun. All right, we're just going to sprinkle columbines all over the place. They're actually one of my favorite flowers. I love columbine flowers, but I've actually never seen purple, yellow, or blue columbine flowers myself. So I wonder what those look like. But I have seen the red columbine flowers. Red columbine flowers are the ones that I'm more familiar with. And they grew all over the place where I used to live in Missouri. So they were very pretty there. All right, we'll put some purple ones over here. Oh, this makes me so happy. I had just a little bit of extra trail mix. Did I just walk on something poisonous? I feel like I did. Who's poisonous? Who's, who's causing issues? Is it the columbines? Oh, <gasps> you guys. They're poisonous. Be careful when you walk on them. It seems like the puppies and I are okay, though. Okay, so I didn't know that about columbines. I learned something new just now. Columbines are poisonous. So here I am, la di da di da putting down some beautiful flowers all around my zoo. And they're poisonous. Oh, and there's some maple syrup. All right, we'll gather up. Eh, eh, there we go. Gather up a little bit of this maple syrup. Don't mind me. Wonderful. All right, puppies. Avoid the poison this columbines. And I'm going to gather up these strawberries from one of our random strawberry gardens. Our zoo is just so coming along. Oh, look at this. I'm so excited. We've got the art. We've got the paths. We've got the rangers. We've got the animals. We've got the signs. And hopefully, if the package arrived from the Museum Trade Center, then we will also have the educational resources. I personally have always loved those places in zoos and museums where you can go and you can look at the charts and you can handle the, the like furs and the skins and the bones. Hello sunflower and sunflower. <laughs> I still can't believe we have two sunflowers now. Oh that's amazing. She is one of our oldest oldest friends so it's really great to have another sunflower. Oh dog quest eventually. Eventually we'll wake that nymph up again and see what she was talking about. All right, so let's go upstairs, see what the male has to say. Put away these fresh picked strawberries and this maple syrup. But yeah, it, do you guys like those places in zoos? You know what I mean? Uh, more like they'll be mostly maybe at museums or, you know, when you go into a really nice school for kids and they have the science area for kids, then they'll have like all of the different dried specimens. I used to teach at a place where we had so many specimens. It was amazing. We had bat bones. We had so many, um, oh gosh, we had all sorts of different rocks that the kids could touch and hold and handle and put under microscopes. And I, I think that was so important, making sure you had those kinds of resources. Because if you can put your hands on something and then investigate it at your own pace, so not in the way, you know, when you're in high school and you have the little like chart that you have to fill out when you're doing a science class. And it's very, very formal. It's like step one, step two, you should expect step three is the reaction. There's something so much more fun about just giving all of the supplies, the resources, a whole wall of books, a whole wall of bones. I had literal bones from like bears. I had a live salamander that they could look at in the tank but not touch. Thank goodness. I had hissing cockroaches and it was so amazing just to see them interact with all of those creatures and study all those creatures on their own time. Oh, and Agent Noodles, you gave me another dead golden Jezebel flower. They're butterfly. Thank you, Agent Noodles. Oh, goodness. And I don't know where Aki went. 
I'm really worried about her. I mean, I might have to contact Ben and he might have to let me know if there's like something in particular I need to do for my little maple tree spirit. I think she's sleeping in her tree. So I'll have to figure out if like I need to have a little festival. Maybe she's tired and I have to have some sort of autumn festival when I swap this over to the autumn garden and, and celebrate with her. Oh gosh, puppies are hungry. Quick, quick. Tate, why did you say something? Tate, eat the ostrich. Eat this, eat this. Oh yeah, oh my goodness puppies, you startled me. But yeah, oh my gosh. All right, enough blathering, enough blathering. And I have no idea where Aki went. I'm a little worried about that. Um, and Agent Noodles is a little worried about Aki too. Is she in here? Is she is she lost in the cornfield? This tiny baby cornfield? Nope. All right, well, we'll put these things away. And then we'll go look for her a little bit later. Oh, and I need to check the mail in just a second. But yeah, that was my favorite thing to do was have those kinds of educational hands-on exhibit areas. And yes, we have mail. All right. Where the kids could just at their own leisure, look through everything, look at bones, look at crystals, look at specimens, take out dozens of different slides. We had hundreds of slides of different things under the microscope. It was amazing. And I think that is the best way to possibly introduce science and all of those sorts of things to everybody. Giving them hedgehog quills, giving them porcupine quills to hold, to look at, to examine, to, to move around in their hand, to put under a microscope. I'm very much about hands-on learning, but not only hands-on learning, but like intuitive hands-on learning where you let them go at their own pace and then oh thank you so much a dandelion oh that's adorable where you let other other the kids go at their own pace or anybody anybody with curiosity go at their own pace but you are there with them to be the active engaged teacher where you're not leading you're letting their curiosity lead and basically you can tell i get really excited about these things okay i was a teacher don't forget you guys i i used to be a teacher and now i'm a youtuber because i can be a teacher on a big platform scale but you can tell what that's a spider you can tell it, uh, it was something i was really passionate about and agent noodles is this what you're doing the noodle doodle dance because we have a spider oh it's from pavo happy halloween oh my gosh look at all of this this is so cool this is so cool and i've heard rumor that pavo has actually discovered a mysterious halloween place in this world that we're gonna have to check out pretty soon i can't believe halloween is coming up so soon it's also my mom's birthday so on halloween we'll probably celebrate i'll put on my little my little halloween outfit uh which you guys may have seen because we have the boo h she going on right now and i'll put on my little halloween outfit and we'll have like a little trick-or-treat or maybe that's when we'll work on the autumn garden or have some sort of celebration for Aki so we can wake her up out of her tree. And yeah, I will also make a cake for my mom because I love my mom. Oh, and here, dude, I'm going to finish that cake for you. Speaking of cake, and, and there must be other mail too. So we'll check that out in a second. But yeah, Halloween. I'm so excited. Oh, and Jude, it's pumpkin cheesecake. Oh my gosh. I think we need to like, there you go, Jude. I know that's what you've been waiting for. Jude is an Enderman after all. He is our mail mob on duty. And I know that he loves pumpkin. So hopefully that will go well for him. And oh my gosh, there's so much candy. Yutsu candy, kasi candy, milk candy, mint candy, pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. Chips does not like pumpkin pie. And then let's see, acacia leaves, beautiful leaves. Yep. And that's how you should decorate an extra box. Oh my gosh, and look at these. <gasps> citrine roses. Oh, we should decorate with citrine roses, you guys. <gasps> we should change up all of these flowers. That would be so cool. I wonder if we could teach our little, um, I wonder if I could teach my hedgehog to drop something other than like the summery flowers it's been doing. What if we have it drop like thorns and things like that? Um, well, I don't want it to get hurt, but you know, like, well, and I, actually, you know what? Having a bunch of thorns in my yard where I have puppies, squicken, chicken, darlings, uh, uh, cats, like I, 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 hedgehogs. I don't think that that's actually a smart thing. So never mind. We won't have thorns <laughs> inside of my yard, as cool as that could be. But it would be really interesting if maybe we could go to Twilight Forest at some point this month and see what kind of thorns grow over there. Because there's some really amazing thorns and the thorn roses that grow over there. And I would love to have a exhibit with those because I think they're very, very beautiful. So we'll look into that too. So we'll we'll see what kind of cool Halloween-y, autumn-y plants we can put in. We definitely need to swap out our summer garden. Oh my goodness. But thank you, Pavo. This is on oh, coffee. This is going to be really, really fun. So we'll have to go ahead oh, and even some little popcorn pieces, candy, mint candy, milk candy. Oh my gosh, pumpkin pie. Oh, and I think, is that... It's even a little stuffed spider toy. 
oh gosh, and I'll have to check. I need to put away all of this food really quickly before I can check the rest of the mail. But this is awesome. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to have to thank Pavo. And I think Jude is really going to want to thank Pavo too because... Oh, that's just my girls. <laughs> girls, you startled me. I have a bunch of candy. I wonder if I can put the candy in the uncrafting table, actually. <gasps> can you put food in the uncrafting table? Hang on. I want to eat this food, but I've never actually thought to try putting food in the uncrafting table before. And now I'm kind of curious. Can you uncraft mint candy? No, you cannot. Okay. I was really curious if you could uncraft food. But no, you cannot uncraft food. You can uncraft, like, all of your tools, but I wouldn't do that to the Glorious Grafter. We've had the Glorious Grafter for so long now. Also, I'm so excited for February, you guys, because that's when the little chips are probably going to be able to get their chocolate chip making factory. <gasps> and we can make a whole bunch of chocolates. Oh, that would be so fun. All right. Hang on, ladies. Hang on. Oh my goodness, we really do have so many snacks to eat, too. Oh, it's going to take me a little while to start working through all of this, especially the cookies. I really feel like nibbling some cookies today, so we'll go ahead and throw the cookies in here. And tacos, 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 tacos. Where am I going to put the tacos? Hmm, where is one? Oh, I forgot I had a whole cake section. What? I totally forgot about all of this. This is amazing. Yeah, we're going to have plenty of food. We have a whole bunch of candy to go into our little candy spot. I guess I could share all of the candy and cake. That would be a good thing to do for Halloween, I think, is to go through and just like share the bounty of sweets that I happen to have stored up with all of my friends. So we'll definitely do that as well. Let's put the coffee away over here. So now we're all loaded up. We've got the delicious trail mix. I think I'll go ahead and pop most of the trail mix up into the pantry there. All right, and now <gasps> pumpkin muffins! Pumpkin muffins are like one of my all-time favorites, so they can come with me too. And we'll put the pumpkins and the acacia leaves and the dead Jezebel uh, butterfly away as well. Oh, and then I had the, the tacos. I don't know what to do with the tacos. They'll go over in these like prepared and ready to eat meal sections. All right, there we go. So enough dilly-dallying and getting obsessed about my old days of being a teacher. Oh, thank you, Martha. Thank you for the paper. I'll be sure to write up that receipt to get a well built in my yard. Maybe Aki will be happy if there's like a well in here. I'm not sure. I mean, we have sprinklers, but who knows? Maybe Aki would just like it if I worked harder at making our garden even nicer. I'm sure she would appreciate that. And then actually I guess I'll put the pumpkin into the food chest and the citrine roses I'm going to put right there because I would love to get more citrine roses. Oh and Spanish moss and maybe some jacaranda saplings to make our autumn garden really come to life. Oh that would be so cool. And the woolly galampus. Oh that would be so much fun. Yeah we'll work with that. Hello Agent Noodle Doodles. Oh and thank you for the grass Agent Noodle Doodles. We will work with that in the future for sure. All right, so we're good on food and everything. Let's go ahead and see what the rest of our mail is. Also, I'm so excited about this cute little stuffed spider. I'm going to try to put it somewhere fun. Actually, Jude! Jude, do you want to feel pretty festive? Can I put the little stuffed spider? <gasps> I can! Oh, that's so cute. I love that. I'm going to put the little stuffed spider up on top of Jude's little mail spot like this. Whoops, and that popped down an olive actually. Oh, I have an olive tree right here. What? I totally forgot. All right, I'm going to gather up these. And let's see, let's see. Oh, there we go, delivery. And any other, any other mail? Nope, all right, so let's go ahead and see what this is. Delivery. Zookeeper Siri, thank you so much for participating in the museum trade program. We're so excited to have you on board. Trading between zoos, museums, private collections, and other facilities really helps to give all our members access to a much uh, to a much larger variety of specimens than any of us could get on our own. I also love the report you sent in about the raccoons at the War Rosarium Wildlife Center. I can't wait to go and see them myself. Since you did such a dil since you did such diligent research, I feel comfortable with loaning out our fine stuffed raccoon specimen to you. That's wonderful because I know Emily Bones was feeling a little bit nervous about potentially loaning us out one of her prized stuffed raccoon specimens. So hopefully um, she feels more comfortable now that we've actually gone over to E-Rose's Rosarium Wildlife Center and looked at the amazing raccoon exhibit that was over there. Oh, I need to ask E-Rose if it was okay that I removed the snake from the raccoon exhibit when the snake was chasing the, ba the baby raccoon. So I'll have to ask her about that. 
We have delivered the stuffed raccoon and several other specimen pieces to the location you specified. I hope you enjoy our new dioramas. We just got access to new technology that allows us to produce them. Dioramas, huh? We'll be happy to provide you with more. We're looking forward to working again with you soon. Director of Exhibit Management, E-Bones. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, so we'll go down and we will check out the spot I asked them to deliver all of the research, uh, little like exhibit research pieces is actually over here next to our red wolf exhibit that is where we are building up that little cabin and we are going to try to make a nice little educational center where people can stop off and they can learn a little bit more about the temperate forest biome and they can learn about the animals that you might find in the temperate forest all right and let me go ahead and move this from pavo that's so fun happy halloween i'm gonna take another picture of it there we go all right thank you pavo we'll have to go and say thank you to him and i think jude is very excited to have some delicious pumpkin cheesecake because jude is an intermittent so he does love pumpkins. All right, puppies, you guys ready? All right, we're gonna go and check down and see what has been delivered. I'm very excited. I know we're getting a stuffed raccoon, and I know I put in some requests for a few other things, like I mentioned all those museum uh, pieces where you, oh, I, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for the ink sack, the little inkwell, I mean. Um, Thank you very much, Martha. But like I was mentioning, I really loved having the microscope slides when I was a teacher and letting kids look at the microscope slides and see things up close and from a different perspective. It was really, really fun. So hopefully we'll have a few of those too. Oh, and I wonder, mm, I don't know. I don't know, should I take these sculpture pieces down? I can't remember what this sculpture is actually. Oh, let's see, is it a cat? I can't remember. Darn, all right, we won't take these sculpture pieces over to to decorate the area with because I can't remember what this sculpture is. I'll have to wait till I can ask Alex again. All right, we'll put this up. I see the other one is a toucan. Oh, and let's nibble a pumpkin muffin really quickly. And then we'll head over to our red wolves and we will see if the package is in front of them at the education center we're making. All right, hello, Chica Boos and Sunflower and Sunflower. All right. I love it. And actually, it's very important. This will be a good opportunity to teach myself about some of the plants that you could find in a temperate forest. Oh, look, there's Mr. Mole. Mr. Mole, who you can come over to Mr. Mole and you can actually feed him a whole bunch of root vegetables and he will actually give you root strands you can decorate with. So we'll have to come back and do that another day since I do need some root strands to decorate around our duck exhibit and around our black bear exhibit. So that's quite exciting. But, oh, look at all the ducks. <laughs> oh my goodness, I should probably put a little fence line right here so people don't just like step in there and fall on top of a whole flock of ducks. All right, and we'll run this way, but it is a good idea to get some posters and things up about the different things like poison sumac and poison ivy you can run into because there's a lot of poison sumac and poison ivy in the area in Michigan we now live in, and I don't know what they look like because they weren't where I used to live. All right, Alia, Lily, Tate. All right, everybody sit. Museum delivery, there it is, all right. All right, Maple, please remember, we're trying to give the illusion of security, so don't stand too closely to the gate, okay? All right, oh, wait, is that a butterfly? What is that? Oh no, it's just another one of the red wolves. So here's Maple, Summer, and Spruce hanging out over by the entrance to the red wolf exhibit, which really, Spruce, why are you on a tree? Oh my goodness, which really is not like an entrance for everybody So I should probably like make this a hidden gate or make it locked so only zookeepers can go into it But I love their exhibit. It's so beautiful I really love the ivy that's kind of growing right here So you can bat at it while you look at the red wolves and we really need to get the red wolf educator over here I want to have an educator standing right here who can tell you all about the red wolves They can tell you all about the white-tailed deer that we have. Oh fluffy mittens the bunny is still in there and I've been thinking that once we expand our duck flock big enough it would be really nice to move some of our mallard ducks in here oh look and you can see the the american goldfinch over here too oh very nice very nice all right so let's look at this museum delivery these are the pieces we've been waiting for i am so excited all right okay it's surrounded by hay bale oh my gosh i think that's the diorama 
I'm very excited about that, actually. The diorama is something totally new in our world, so we're going to have to look at that. We have squirrel plushies and stuffed teddies, forest posters, raccoon specimens. Looks like those are going to require a little bit more setup. We have a microscope, spice racks, tanning. Oh, my gosh. This is what we were kind of waiting for, too. Oh, wow. It's really big. I didn't realize it would be so big. I might need to put it, like, in a different spot because it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Oh, there we go. It's a wolf skin. Don't worry. It was harvested sustainably. Like you from a, a elder wolf who passed away and has gone on to continue to help us learn more about uh, their species from being able to touch the skin and look at it up close. But that is so cool. Just imagine with an educator standing right there how neat that is going to look. Fluffy mittens. Fluffy mittens, please stay in the exhibit if you want to be in there. I think it's just going up to get a snack from Adelaide. That's really adorable. All right. So, yes, we've got some new skins, which are really fascinating. We've got a new book that we can have people sign and write in. We've got spice racks. The microscope. Oh, the microscope is going to be so exciting. And I can't wait to see this diorama. Hang on, you guys. We've got to set some stuff up. So they've given us pieces so we can kind of decorate in here. Um, I think we'll go ahead... Yeah, we can decorate with the spice racks a little bit like this. Can I turn it? Yeah, look at that. So that kind of gives you like some dried uh, flowers, some dried grasses from around the forest that you can look at. And then we need to make a spot for the microscope. Mm-hmm. I need to make a spot for the raccoon specimen and I really want to show you guys the dioramas because they're a brand new thing in our world and they're beyond amazing. So let's see if we have some- oh my, my zookeeper station is open. Okay. Okay, it doesn't look like it, it doesn't look like it has any zombies or anything inside of it, so we should be safe. All right, let's go ahead and grab some of the oak wood. Um, should I do carpenter stairs? Flipped. I might be able to get away with that actually. So let's grab the carpenter stairs, and I might be able to make some nice counters out of that. And let me go ahead and grab the oak wood. There we go. All right, so. Uh, and actually I should probably chisel the oak wood, shouldn't I, to make it look even fancier. So do I have a chisel on me? I should have a chisel somewhere. So, do -do 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 -do. okay, I have a carpenter's hammer. What do you mean I have that chisel? There's like three different, there it is, there it is. There's three different types of chisels that you need for all of the decorating and all of the work that there is to do in the zoo. And what I want is a nice, smooth double slab. So that's what we're going for. All right, and let's go ahead and close this behind us and run on over. Look at the beautiful ivy. Ah, oh, I love it. It really, it takes a fresh pair of eyes sometimes to just see all of the work that has been done. All right, so there's that. There's this. And let's go ahead. All right, maybe I should put something else right here. We'll have to see. Okay, let's look at the diorama. I want to see that first, and then we'll put down the microscope slide because I'm very excited about this. This is pretty darn amazing, if you ask me. <gasps> yes! Oh, Rotate, 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 look at it! Look at it! It's a mushroom diorama! Look at it, you guys! Isn't this amazing? Look at the detail! You can see everything! So this is a little diorama of a bunch of forest mushrooms. It's teensy tiny, just like the real dioramas you can see in museums. Isn't it the most amazing thing ever? I'm so excited! This is fantastic! And you can kind of see how you've got like the old tree trunks. You can see all of the teensy tiny mushrooms growing everywhere. You can see all of the like fallen trees where the mushrooms are growing on them. The epitites on these trees. A lot more than you would see in one area area of course because this is kind of a teeny miniature display but this is fantastic so now we can go and get some of the real mushrooms and maybe like put them right here and then you can kind of examine them you can examine them oh we should have like a little spot we should make some shelves we should make some shelves so then you can come over oh my gosh I'm so excited now I can hardly stand it and yeah we'll have like some shelves that maybe go right here or maybe right here hmm Hmm, choices, choices. And then you can come over and you can use the microscope with the mushrooms. For instance, if we took this marigold, look at this. Isn't this so cool? If you take the marigold, you can kind of look at it like this under the microscope and really zoom in on it. Or this cookie, look at that. Look at that, you can zoom in on the cookie. 
Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Pumpkin muffin? You want to you want a closer up look uh, up better look at your pumpkin muffin? Maybe check the uh, the lining on your still leaf boots there. Very neat. I love the microscope. It is so cool. So we'll put down a whole bunch of things uh, like a bunch of shelves, maybe right here or maybe right here. I might move the microscope over one and maybe turn it on its side if I could. And then people can look at everything with different microscope slides, which would be so cool. And I love this diorama. Isn't that just the best thing ever it is going to make so many educational opportunities in our zoo this is really fantastic and we're not even started we're not even like started with half the stuff in here putting up forest posters and putting the raccoon specimen i'll have to very gently unpack it and put it probably right here and then we'll have forest posters all around the place oh this is going to be so cool this is going to be really awesome you guys all right so this is a good start and this is what that whole museum trade was about and hopefully in the future we'll be able to do more trades with her and we will be able to set up more little educational education stations like this throughout our entire zoo so people can come in and they can find a lot of awesome information we'll have an educator behind a counter here you might be able to buy some little souvenir samples and you'll be able to see these amazing dioramas these are so cool i am in love with this this is just amazing but all right wonderful 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 well i'm gonna go ahead and get started on unpacking the raccoon and putting up the forest posters and i will see you guys next time bye bye Bye.